Hello there. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the riemann liouville fractional integral, or some people call it just the different integral relationship given by this integral equation. So some people will refer to this again as the riemann liouville derivative or fractional integral. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to revisit a formula that we proposed in the beginning of this fractional calculus series. That is the fractional power rule. So, you know, the half derivative of x, the third derivative of x to the fourth, and so on. In the beginning, all we did was pretty much take the relationship of the ordinary power rule and sort of extend it to all real numbers. So we were like, okay, this formula seems to make sense of what it should be. But in this video, we're actually going to prove that that formula actually is correct and that it agrees with this riemann liouville definition. So before we get started with the actual formal proof of the fractional power rule or the fractional integral rule, I just want to prove that the, the formula that we derived in the beginning of the series actually makes sense for the integral direction of the relationship. So again, the function that we're going to be interested in this video is f of x is equal to x to the nu, or x to the n if you want. So I want to first off talk about the first integral of this function. So the first integral of this function with base points 0 and x of this function, by definition, is just going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of t to the nu dt. So we know, by our power rule from standard calculus, this is just going to be equal to x to the nu plus 1 divided by nu plus 1. So if I want to do the second integral of f of x, this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of t to the nu plus 1 over nu plus 1 dt. And that's just going to be equal to x to the nu plus 2 all over nu plus 1 multiplied by nu plus 2. If I want to continue, I can do the third, so 0x3, so the third integral of f of x. This is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of t to the nu plus 2 divided by nu plus 2 times nu plus 1 dt. So adding 1 to the new exponent, so that's going to give us x to the nu plus 3 all divided by nu plus 3 times nu plus 2 times nu plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this downward, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by nu, nu minus 1, all the way down to 2 times 1. I'm going to extend, I'm going to multiply the top by nu, nu minus 1, all the way down to 2 times 1. And then I can express this in terms of the gamma function because nu need not be an integer. So this, in a way, if nu is an integer, is going to be nu plus 3 factorial, which is the same as gamma of nu plus 4. And the top is the same as nu factorial if nu is a natural number, which can be extended to gamma of nu plus 1. So this is going to be equal to x to the nu plus 3 times gamma nu plus 1, all divided by nu of gamma of nu plus 4. So we can extend this to any order alpha if we want. So then we're going to have i 0 x alpha of x to the nu. It's just going to be equal to nu, gamma of nu plus 1 divided by gamma so remember, notice this is one more than the order for what you're dealing with. So that's going to be 1 plus nu plus alpha times x to the nu plus alpha. So if we want to find, so this is the fractional integral power rule. So if we want to derive, say, the fractional derivative power rule, we're simply going to replace alpha with negative alpha. So that means we're going to have i 0x minus alpha f of x, which by definition is just going to be the fractional integral of order alpha of f of x. And that's just going to be equal to gamma of nu plus 1 
all over gamma 1 plus nu minus alpha times x to the nu minus alpha. And this is the same formula that we pretty much proposed at the beginning of the series. So this, again, is the fractional derivative power rule. But of course, these are just assumptions. We haven't really proven that these actually agree with the true um, uh, Riemann-Liouville fractional integral definition. We've just sort of extended our properties from uh, general elementary calculus uh, to sort of any real numbers. So let's prove, so theorem, our claim is that the derivative or the fractional derivative with base point 0x of x to the nu is equal to gamma nu plus 1 all over gamma nu plus 1 minus alpha times x to the nu minus alpha. So our goal is to prove this using the Riemann-Liouville fractional derivative definition. All right, proof. So let's start with the Riemann-Liouville definition. So this is going to be um, the integral from 0 to x of order alpha, and then we'll replace alpha with negative alpha at the end of x to the nu, by definition, is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma of alpha of the integral from 0 to x of x minus t to the alpha minus 1 times t to the nu dt. So we're replacing x nu with t nu uh, due to the change of variables that we have to deal with. All right, so I'm going to begin by working on a little transformation here so I can sort of get this in a more familiar form. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to x. So I'm going to factor out an x out of this term. So I'm going to have x times 1 minus t divided by x, all raised to the alpha minus 1, times t to the nu dt. And then I'm going to distribute this alpha minus 1 power uh, to both of those terms. So this is going to be equal to 1 over gamma alpha times the integral from 0 to x of x to the alpha minus 1 times 1 minus t over x to the alpha minus 1 uh, multiplied by t to the nu dt. And it's very important to note here that x should be greater than 0 to avoid any issues and singularities here. All right, so we're going to perform a u substitution. So we're going to let u be equal to t over x, which is the same thing as saying t is equal to ux. So we're treating x as a constant here in regards to this integral, so keep that in mind. So the derivative of u is going to be equal to 1 over x times dt, or equivalently, dt is going to be equal to x times du. Also, when t is equal to 0, u is going to be equal to 0 divided by x, which is going to be equal to 0, provided x is a positive number. And when t is equal to x, we're going to have u is equal to x over x, which is going to be equal to 1. Again, assuming that x is a positive number. So these are our new integral bounds. So 0 to x transforms to 0 to 1, and dt transforms into du. So this integral turns into, so equals, 1 divided by gamma alpha times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus u to the power alpha minus 1. So t is equal to u to the x, so I'm going to have u x to the power of nu, and dt is going to equal to x times du. Oh, I forgot one little thing. Where's my x to the alpha minus 1? There he is. All right, so again, x times x to the alpha minus 1 times x is going to be x to the alpha, and that is a constant, so I can factor that outside of my integral. So this is just going to be equal to x to the power of alpha all over gamma alpha times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus u to the power alpha minus 1. I'll decompose this ux nu term. So that's going to be u nu x nu du. 
Again, I'm going to factor out my x nu outside and combine it with my x alpha. So this is going to be equal to x nu plus alpha all over gamma alpha times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus u to the alpha minus 1 times u to the nu plus 1 minus 1 du. And you may wonder why i written like this, but this should look familiar. This is going to be a beta function. So this is just going to be equal to x to the nu plus alpha divided by gamma of alpha times the beta function with parameters alpha and nu plus 1. So by the properties of the beta function, so this is x nu plus alpha all over gamma alpha times, so this is going to be gamma alpha, gamma nu plus 1, all over the gamma of the sum of those parameters, alpha plus nu plus 1. So as we see, gamma of alpha cancels. So we have that this expression is equal to x to the nu plus alpha times the coefficient gamma nu plus 1 all over gamma alpha plus nu plus 1 which we can write in the form that we want, namely 0x alpha of x to the nu is going to be equal to nu of, so nu plus 1 all over nu 1 plus nu plus alpha times x to the nu plus alpha. So now we're going to shift alpha to minus alpha in terms of the transformation. Or we can define this integral in the beginning to be beta, and then we can let beta be equal to negative alpha. That makes you more comfortable. So then we have i0x minus alpha of x nu is just going to be equal to gamma nu plus 1 all over gamma 1 plus nu minus alpha of x nu minus alpha. So by the definition, an equivalence of the riemann louville fractional integral and the grunewald litnikov derivative that we derived and proved to be equivalent to the riemann louville fractional integral, we have that the fractional derivative of the power x to the nu is going to be equal to nu gamma nu plus 1 all over gamma 1 plus nu minus alpha of x to the nu minus alpha. And this is what we sought out to prove. So that proves that this thing that made sense when we originally started this fractional calculus series actually does match with the riemann louville fractional integral. So originally this formula that we proposed was true by extending our standard calc 1 results to it by extending factorials to gammas. So we also proved the grunewald letnikov derivative we derived the riemann louville fractional integral and proved that these two things are equivalent, namely d alpha and i alpha, which is just the same as d minus alpha, which we proved. So we've proven the fractional integral formula for x to the nu and proven it for the grunewald letikov at the same exact time, because as we've already shown, they are equivalent. So we can use one in terms of the other to prove any identity for which we want.